so relevant today. And Lord, help us to love you, to praise you with our lives. And I pray that you be with each performer tonight, each singer tonight, be with Krista this evening as well. And Lord, I just pray that we'll love you each day and love you more as we go from here. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
He's coming soon. She had suffered for 12 years and had spent all she had searching for a cure. Then one day, in an act of faith, this woman from Galilee quietly reached out to touch the hem of Christ's robe. She was instantly healed. The robe was just a piece of cloth. Yet when Christ was present, there flowed a great healing power. As we gather here today, this could be just another choral presentation. We pray that the Spirit of Christ will live in our words and music as we invite you to come. Come encounter the presence and power of Christ. Come touch the robe.
Through the robe, she experienced Christ's compassion and healing. Later, on a mountain, the robe reflected his holiness and power. Jesus took three of his disciples up the mountain and was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as the light. Moses and Elijah appeared with him, and a voice came from a cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Certainly this was a powerful encounter for the disciples. His shining robe and the voice from the cloud burned into their memories. Though they would face many difficult days, these memories would give them tremendous confidence as they preached the lordship and gospel of Christ. He called us up to the mountain, we followed the master's call, and we were changed forever by the glory. were dramatically revealed on the mountain. Later, when Jesus and his disciples entered Jerusalem, the cloaks of the people were used to proclaim his glory. A large crowd spread their cloaks and palm branches on the road. They formed a procession and shouted, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The whole city was stirring and asked, Who is this man? The crowd answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth. Many were wondering if this could really be their new king. Others had already witnessed Christ's power and shouted, Blessed is the King of Israel. Hosanna, Hosanna, He is the King of Israel. Hosanna, 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 he's the king of Israel, Hosanna. 
I heard he can raise the dead, is it true? Oh yes, oh yes, I saw it. He called out to an open grave, and from the dead a man he raised. I heard he can calm the storm, is it true? Oh yes, oh, oh yes, yes, I saw it. He called out to the angry waves, peace be still. Jesus and his disciples gathered in an upper room to share the Passover meal. After witnessing the events of the week, the disciples were now certain Jesus would be their new king. What happened next left them wondering what kind of king he would be. After the Passover meal, he rose and laid aside his garments. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the feet of the disciples. Jesus removed his robe to take on the form of a servant. His clothes had conveyed healing and had reflected heaven's glory. But now, his robe was laid aside to teach the disciples an enduring lesson of humility. Servants close. 
In Philippians, we read that Jesus took upon himself the form of a servant. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the excruciating death of the cross. He demonstrated this obedience unto death through his arrest, his trial, and his crucifixion. After he was tried, soldiers mocked him, and stripped him of his garment, replacing it with a purple robe. They put a crown of thorns on his head and hailed him as king. But through every step of the way, it was clear he had become the king of suffering. Cross awesome. 
Soldiers cast lots to see who would take Jesus' robe. As Christ died, the winner held the empty robe in his hand. To the sick woman, it had conveyed healing power. For the disciples on the mountain, it had reflected heaven's glory. But now that Jesus was gone, it was just a piece of cloth. The soldiers hadn't planned to be touched by their encounter with Christ, but at least one of them was changed by what he saw that day. At the moment of Christ's death, he exclaimed, Surely this was the Son of God.
Jesus' body was laid in a borrowed tomb. The stone was rolled into place. The grave was sealed as his body lay silently wrapped in the shroud of death. But the Bible promises that death has lost its power. O death, where is your sting? O grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 55-57 Come and touch his linen shroud, not to mourn the tragedy of death, but to remember that these grave clothes will soon lay empty, left behind on the floor of the tomb. Today, we've encountered Christ through the stories of His last days on earth. We've touched His robe of healing. We've seen His shining robe of glory. We've been challenged by His humble clothes of servanthood. We've remembered His purple robe of suffering and felt the linen of His shroud. But we look forward to the day when we will truly see Christ, clothed in the full righteousness and power of heaven. The book of Revelation tells us that one day, we will wear the shining robes of the saints and join all heaven to proclaim the marvelous glory of the Lamb. Sing it 
Jesus is alive. Uh, can we give another round of applause to these guys? Yeah. I want to leave you with this scripture. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And praise the Lord that Jesus really is alive. And if that program that we just heard tonight has stirred questions in your heart, don't be afraid to come and ask. And I invite you to come to Easter this Sunday, uh, 1015, right here in this room. Let's pray. Have a good evening. Father, thank you so much for this 
wonderful story. Lord, the, the story that matters the most in all of human history. Lord, there's no way that we could ever praise you enough. But Lord, I pray tonight has been a pleasing aroma to you. And Father, as we leave this place, help it to, to change our heart, to change our mind, to change how we live, that we would honor you because you were willing to become a human being and die on a cross for us. Lord, there is nothing greater than that fact. Lord, may it humble us and show us the way that we should treat each and every person in our lives. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a good evening.